plan. I'm going to film this really, really quickly because two reasons. My phone's about to die and my dinner's almost ready and I'm really hungry. So this video will be my March book haul. I believe I have every book that I received or bought last month in this pile but it feels very very little so I'm not 100% sure. These are the books that I bought brand new or were sent for sent by I can't speak I can't speak today so excuse the blurs and the jump cuts and everything. This will just be the books that I bought myself or was sent from publishers. I did buy about nine books in some charity shops but I've already filmed a video of those so I will link that down below. Where do I start? The first book that I bought in March was the finished copy of The Shadowkeeper by Abby Elphinstone. This is the second book in a trilogy that I'm currently obsessed with. It is amazing. It's 9 to 12 middle grade age, grade age range. I told you I can't talk. And it's just, oh, it's wonderful. It's about a little girl called Moll who's a gypsy and her wild cat Griff and they just go on this adventure and it's just so good. I can't. I actually, oh, I think it's in the wash. It so is. Oh, it's a shame. Ooh, I just went some bookmarks. I think I've worn it in a couple videos, but I've actually bought a Shadow Keeper jumper. It's got a little Griff paw print on the front and on the back it's got a big paw print. Paw, paw, paw print. <laughs> and it says hashtag Shadow Keeper and I'm obsessed with it. It is the fluffiest and comfiest thing I've ever worn. And oh, I can't wait for the third one. Abby's just announced, I think it was yesterday or this morning, I can't remember, that Simon and Schuster have signed her for another two books, which is the third of this book trilogy and the start of a new one and I'm just ecstatic. This next book should be no surprise to most people, I think everyone bought this this month and that is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I'm sorry the light's reflecting of it, it's just a very shiny book. I actually had to sticker these up with the price, like the money off things, stickers, <laughs> the day before. There, about, it was actually probably about two or three days before it was released and I was just like holding all of them like no one else has this yet but I do. Although I couldn't buy it, it had to stay at work obviously. Now I bought this because I have a little bit of, of a little bit of an obsession with trade paperbacks. I love big trade paperbacks. It's got one of my favourite colours sprayed on the edges and it's Cassandra Clare. The problem is I have only read the first three Moral Instruments series books. I have not read the final three, I have not read the Infernal Devices, I have not read the Bane Chronicles, the Shadowhunter Tales or whatever the novella short story things are called. So there's no way I can read this yet but I still bought it. I also haven't read the back because I don't want to spoil myself for the rest of the books and I know nothing of it. It's Cassandra Clare. I'm so excited. The next book I picked up is actually a set of two plays, one of which I read and I bought it because I really liked that play and I wanted to own a copy of it. And that is Quiz Show by Rob Drummond. It's also featuring Bullet Catch but I haven't read this. Quiz Show, oh my gosh, I hate plays. I hate reading plays. I've not really seen many of the ones I did see I didn't like. However, this book, well this play, was the best play I've ever read. And I don't mean that as in, you know, I didn't like them and I like this one. I mean it was fantastic. I don't think I'm making sense but seriously it's so good. It's set at, um, during a quiz show obviously but it's just nothing really makes sense until the final like 10 page monologue and you're just sitting there like oh my it's like it's mind-blowing. I, I, I oh my gosh. This next book I had to pick up because as soon as I found out we could like order it and get it in shop. I needed it. And that is The Book of Mormon. My bookmarks are falling out. It's a Grace Keeper's bookmark. The Book of Mormon script. It's literally the Book of Mormon. The Book of Book of Mormon. Oh. It's and it's just it's got little like whatever you want to call that. Oh don't show me those. And then it's just the actual book of the musical. I probably won't ever read it. But I now own it, so if anyone wants to do a production of Book of Mormon with me. Hello, my name is Elsa Price. Oh no, I'm now in my head. The next book I bought was pretty much because my manager forced me to. Basically, my manager loves Paris. He's obsessed with Paris. Anything to do with Paris, he will get. So he read this book and then 
basically told me it was amazing and made me buy it so I bought it. And that is The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. This is part of our Waterstones book club. It's about a man who runs a bookshop in Paris, surprisingly, and he's like an apothecary. He prescribes people with books to help him out in life, but he can't prescribe one for himself. And it just sounds so sweet. So I'm quite excited to get into that. This next book was one that everyone seemed to be loving a couple like months ago, or even a couple years ago when it first came out on booktube. And Jesse the reader is like obsessed with it. It's his favorite book series ever. And I was always interested in it. And then we got it in at work and we had it sectioned under horror and I was like oh, okay I don't want to read that if it's gonna scare me I have anxiety I don't want to freak myself out basically. But then I watched the trailer for it and I was just like this looks amazing so I now bought it. We actually now shelled it under teens as well because the movie's coming out and Watersons have realised oh this isn't selling well in horror maybe we should put it into YA where it belongs. <laughs> and that is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I'm so impressed I got that out in one go. Basically it's about home for strange children, <laughs> for strange children and people seem to love it and I'm now going to read it because it looks good, the trailer looks good for the movie and I want to see the movie but I think people are saying it's meant to be different to the book as usual so I want to read the book first. I went through the Waterstones website to look at all the new up and coming real book releases for like this month or like last month anyway and I noticed this one which I don't really know anything about but it caught my eye and I now own it because that's what happens. So I picked up The Art of Not Breathing by Sarah Alexander. This is something about a girl whose twin dies I think and then she goes diving, I think what was it called? Um, free diving. She goes, she ends up free diving to like, because it makes her recall memories of how her brother died or something like that. Um, so I think it's a kind of contemporary but perhaps a little bit on the eerie side. So I'm fairly keen to get into this. I'm saying fairly because I don't know much about it. I'm not that excited about it and I have too many books. But it does sound very good. I also ordered a copy of Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. I saw someone, I can't remember who it was, oh my hair is on the book, on booktube, it's still on the book, <laughs> talking about it and my mum loves Peter Pan and because of that I do as well. So oh, this, is, this is a book based on Tiger Lily, it's her point of view and it's all about, like, I think it's about her loving Peter and things like that. I don't, I don't really know. I just like the cover and it's by Peter Pan. For a few days at work when I was shelving in teens this next book keep catch kept this next book kept catching my eye and I just got sparked with a desire like a really intense desire to read it so I decided you know I don't care how many books you have if you want to read this you need to buy it so you can read it and that was or is or whatever <laughs> is Soulmates by Holly Bourne or Byrne or nah. Which is about, it's basically set in a world where soulmates do exist but if you meet each other it can cause catastrophic problems. I'm halfway through it, I still want to finish it because I do love the characters. But for now, I don't really want fluffy contemporaries. And the final book that I bought in March was The Pomegranate Tree by Vanessa Alton. I bought this because a customer, a regular customer that comes in brought it to my attention because, a, well, brought an article to my attention in which the author complained that Waterstone shelved her book two shelves above John Boyne, who wrote The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Her complaint was that this book is about Syria. It's about a Syrian girl who is dealing with what is going on in Syria, basically, and all her family and everything. I've read this now. It was beautiful. It really opened my eyes. You know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like I you know I know everyone around the world is human and we're all the same but reading a story from a Syrian girl's point of view who's dealing with all the heartache and destruction going on in that country it you know I, I felt you know I could have been that girl I, I can't try to remember her name Dilvan Dilvan Dilly I think they call her yeah Dilvan I'm gonna call her Dilvan it's probably Dil Dilvan or something but you know I connected with her and I felt I could understand her you know she's only like she, I think she's like yeah she's a 13 year old girl and she came across as someone about my age and when as I was reading her because she's had to grow up so much throughout the book 
So it really opened my eyes to who these Syrians are, the refugees and everything and what they've been through. And it was just gorgeous. I do agree that it was probably, because the author's complaint was that the Waterstone she'd went to had a sticker saying not suitable for younger readers on it. And then she was saying, but, and they shelved it above John Boyne. Um, because apparently concentration camps are okay but actual current affairs aren't or something along those lines and I was just kind of like yeah but your surname's Alton so of course you're going to be shelved above John Boyne but you know this might be spoilerish so mute the video if you don't want to know until I put my hand down there's a part of this book where they're about to get caught, the, um, Dylan and some, you know, she's basically she's about to get caught by some people, the bad people. And the sort of leader of her group sort of thing gives her a grenade and says, if they catch you, like, blow yourself and your family or your friends or whatever up. And I'm just like, I don't really want people younger than like 12 reading that. It's a bit tense, tense, a bit intense. But... So yeah, I agree that it should be for young, not for younger readers, but I do think it's very important and I think if you see this you should give it a go. It's like less than 200 pages, fly through it, and it's just so relevant to what's going on in the world right now. And then I'll just briefly show you the books that I was sent by publishers, there's only two. The first one is Yellow Brick War by Danielle Page. I'm so excited. I've only read Dorothy Must Die. I have not yet read the second book or the first set of novellas. So I need to get on with those and also buy the second set of novellas. But I'm so excited. I love it. I also love the underneath the dust jacket. It's like that. Look at, oh, it's just, it's great. So yeah, thank you to Harper for sending me that. I love you. And the next book I am so excited to show with you guys. I honestly, all I want to do right now is to tell you everything about this book, to discuss it with you, to share my thoughts, but I'm under strict instructions not to. And I'm sorry if, if you're excited for this book, then I'm really sorry that I can't tell you anything more than how much I loved it. But I suppose I should probably show you what it is. So I'm very, very grateful that Little Brown sent me a copy of On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. Oh, this book isn't out until July and it's just, this reminded me why I felt like, why I love reading, why, you know, I fell back in love with reading because of this book. I literally, like, I, I haven't done this for very, very long, but I'll be reading a book sometimes and I'll go, okay, I will just read one more chapter and I will. But with this, it was like, yeah, just one more. And I'd go, oh no, I wouldn't even say to myself, oh, just one more. I'd just keep reading. And then I was like, okay, it's like midnight. You should probably go to sleep. No, I stayed up till like half past one in the morning to finish this damn book because it was so good. I like, I will tell you, much, like, I don't really cry at books, okay? Like I might get a single tear or I'll be internally emotional, but I don't really sob. I sobbed. I was in full on tears. I actually finished the book and I loved it so much and I was so proud of Carrie for such a good book. So I'll admit I was a little bit nervous about her doing fiction because I, you know, I know she's a great performer and everything, but I've never, and I know she can, my book just fell. Like I know she can write songs, but I was kind of like, oh, you know, I hope this is, like I wasn't expecting it to be bad, but I was just like, oh, I, you know, I really hope she writes something really, really well. And I was so proud of her that I literally just closed the book and hugged it while I was crying at like for one in the morning because it was fantastic. And as I say, I'm not allowed to just like, I can't even show you like pages, but oh, honestly, this book is worth the wait. I'm just, I'm hugging it again. I'm hugging it again. I love it. Anyway, I now have a mess of books over my bed. My dinner is here, which I'm so excited about. Don't know why you would care, but I care. I'm in such a good mood right now. I haven't been in the mood to film. And as I was driving home from work, I was like, it's still late outside. I can film my March wrap up, my, Mar what was it? March book haul. Don't even know what I'm talking about. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave me comments below and thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe. And I will see you very soon with my March wrap up, which will include more hugging of this book. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye.